So, uh, this, you know, later this winter, there'll be a hearing and the judge will make a decision likely quick. I, I think he'll be do, he'll do it relatively quickly after that hearing. I think there might have been a time when pe- people would have sided with, oh, keep it in the family. But I think after the book about the Bush family came out and a couple of more scandals and them selling to NBEV, I don't really feel that we care about protecting the Bush family's feelings anymore. There, there definitely are some people who have who have gotten in touch with me saying that, some readers who, who, who uh, have emailed or called and said they want Billy Bush to keep it. Um, but I've gotten a lot of, there's a lot of people, I mean, the zoo, the zoo is just a huge organization here. I mean, it's, as, right. it's darn near as popular as the Cardinals. I think they probably think they're more popular than the Cardinals. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's, I think it's, in the in the court of public opinion, uh, I see it unlikely that the Bushes can beat the zoo at this point. It's kind of juggernauts, isn't it? The zoo versus the Bushes. That's true. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, all right, let's go back to the stadium thing. It wasn't that long ago that the Cardinals were shilling a building. Oh, yeah. and we got Ballpark Village, and there's right, going to be condos, right, right. The promises, and apartments. And you know, I was in another radio station where. We were kind of aligned with the team, and we were tasked as being the messenger. And we were the ones to go out and say, this is a great deal. We should have this in the Cardinals. And then they get the building passed, and a mud hole sits there for a year and a half or so. We wrote a lot about that, too. I felt betrayed by the team. Wow. And I think there are people now that are going into this one with the football team and a new stadium downtown with the same kind of reluctance because those wounds are still pretty fresh. I mean, Ballpark Village still isn't everything that they promised us a decade ago. Oh, it's not even close. And we are seeing, I'm sure this was not by design, but the cannibalism of merchants on Washington Avenue in the Central West End and Soulard and downtown bars and restaurants off as much as 60% in their business. Yeah, we, we have heard a lot of people, uh, Washington Avenue um, bars and restaurants saying that the Ballpark Village has, has stolen business. You know, the landing's having a really hard time right now. I mean, the you know, the Arch Grounds renovation is going to open up into the landing. I think that'll really help the landing. Yeah. But most people I talk to aren't sure who's going to make it to that point. You know, that's still months away right. before those path passages under... Um, Eads Bridge open up. Yeah. Obviously, that'll be great for Luke Leeds Landing, but in the meantime, it's really struggling. Another business closed there recently. Washington Avenue, you know. I mean, I, I haven't talked to owners there in a while, but last time they were really worried about the impact of Ballpark Village. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think there's a lot. There are There is certainly a strong contention of people who are worried about their tax dollars going to the stadium and are worried about promises made in the past and whether or not promises made now you know, will will be carried out. No one follows this closer than you. All aspects from following the owners around to uh, sitting in on the meetings and watching what the, the Board of Aldermen's going to do and, and uh, Peacock's committee. So Thank you, John. If you had to prognosticate, what do you think? I mean, wh- where would you put our chances? So I think that, I, I, I honestly, I think it's 50-50 because I think that the owners are, are legitimately torn between Stan Kroenke's proposal to go to Inglewood, you know, well, and uh, really Dean Spanos's, the owner of the San Diego Chargers, his proposal to go to Carson. Oakland is teaming up with Dean in, in uh, Carson, you know, which is really just down the freeway from Inglewood. Right. Um, but uh, Oakland is considered a non-essential part of that deal. So if they go, it'll help out, maybe help pay the bills. But but Dean Spanos could do it on his own. So those so, so owners really are choosing between, kind of, you know, people say Dean Dean Spanos has said he's been trying for 15 years for a new stadium in San Diego. That is not what's happened here in St. Louis. So people are really choosing between those two. I think that that is an unknown and legitimate debate. I is Kroenke as loved uh, by the other owners as he is by the uh, public of St. Louis? I would say there are some no, owners. Sarcasm. Who, yes, I would say there are some owners who love him quite similarly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not not all the owners like him for sure. But that said, don't make too much of. The, there's a lot of people who talk about how much Stan Kroenke is hated by the owners. I think that is a I think that is a foolish path to go down. 
you know, some of the owners are making decisions based on who they like. Most are thinking about things in terms of dollars and cents. And themselves. And what they want for their future for their team. You're absolutely right. What does it mean for the owners of the Pats uh, yeah. and of the Jets if a team leaves St. Louis and go to Los Angeles? What will that translate to dollar-wise for them, the other side of the well, country? Also, I mean, it's it's little stuff, right? Like, I mean, I don't know this, but I can only imagine that somebody's saying, hey, I'll vote for you today if I can get the Super Bowl in three years, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just like we were talking about before break, you know, these are, this is a legislative body at this point, and they're cutting deals to make things pass, just like the mayor did for the Board of Aldermen and aldermen did for each other. Drop dead time is the 13th, yes? January 12th, 13th is the meeting. Is that what you mean? Right. Yeah. The, so the b but we do not know for certain that they will vote. Then there is a strong push by the LA Opportunities Committee to get a vote um, by several members of the LA Opportunities Committee. That doesn't mean it'll happen. Uh, again, uh, back to what Goodell said after the last meeting in December. If we have to close the door and vote until we get an answer, maybe we'll do that. I mean, you know that that has happened before, and he was basically saying he'd do it again. So there's not a date. There's not. We'll know by January 21st. No, the no. There's not a, a date, um, and that's been really frustrating for a lot of people, for a lot of fans. It's it feels like in October, you know, people said at the end of the year, and December, people said, you know, January. In January, they're going to say February. I mean, that's been really frustrating for folks. It's slightly off topic because I I can't really focus for very long. <laughs> We had tried, we had reached out to talk to some of the people uh, with the Rams and merchandising because I'm really curious yeah. as we come up to this holiday season, the people that right. buy jerseys, the people that buy hats, the people that buy ticket packages to put in stockings for the holidays, are, are they even selling tickets for next season? Yeah, I mean, we, we just had a Jeremy Kohler, one of my colleagues, colleagues just did a front page story about... Um, you know, like some guy had the best seats in the house, four hundred dollar face value. You know, couldn't get fifty bucks for them online. Right. So it's not answering your question exactly, but it gets to the idea. I think I think they're having a hard time. But have they even made them available? I mean, they they have to act as business as usual, don't they? Um, you mean for the next season? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't I, looked. Can you go online and buy tickets for uh, you know the Rams? What? As soon as we get year? off here, I'm going to check it out. That's a great question. I, I haven't. You know, I haven't I, looked. I've got a job already I, to do yours on top of everything else. It's just, it's a John. Lot. That's that's a sign of of of, of my potential fatigue here. Is I'm you, taking all ideas possible. Uh, and, really anyone have an idea for me? Yeah, please send me an email. One child rookie. Yeah, I know. One child. Right. Come back when you hit the four. All mark. ideas. I'll take everything. David, can we follow you online too? I imagine yes. tweeting and all that. Jazz? Yes, I'm at David at David Hun D A V I D H U N N, and uh, on STL today uh, and in the paper. I've enjoyed this immensely. I'm stealing you if uh, you'll join us where all the beautiful people are between uh, one and three. Where the beautiful people okay. are, how could I possibly decline? All right, we will see you then. Enjoy your holidays and enjoy that new. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having baby me. Baby as well. Sugar Fire Smokehouse, one of our sponsors. We figured we'd come over here in the morning and tell you early, folks what you might be missing. Maybe you're not. Maybe you already know about the legendary brisket that